cases. It was uh, a terrible part of my family's life, which still continues because they're constantly up for parole, including Charles Manson. So we've always had to go to parole hearings. He's a very cruel man. He not only led um, his followers to do his dirty deeds, he, he ruined their lives as well as the lives that were, were taken. Mm -hmm. um, there was six alone in my sister's house, and that's not including the next day at the La Bianca's. Mm -hmm. um, he did not know my sister. Although he had been up to the house, um, he, he <clears throat> I understand, was trying to make a, a music deal at that time mm -hmm. with someone else that had lived in the house previously. But he did know that they no longer lived there mm -hmm. because he came to the door one day. My sister answered it and said, no, that they no longer lived there. And he uh, still sent up his followers to go and do what they did to my sister and her friends. Word is that Charles Manson has always wanted to be a songwriter and right. that this song that Axl Rose sings is actually Charles Manson's song. I mean, he wrote right. that. What measures have, have you and your family taken in light of Axl Rose basically promoting the man who murdered your sister? Oh, absolutely. And what, what um, Axl Rose and the band has done is turned Charles Manson into a cult idol, of which he was basically back in 69 to his followers. Um, I want people to know that there's still his followers out there, and they still are working for him, even though he's behind bars, you know, he's in prison and hopefully will always be in prison. Aren't you also calling for a boycott Absolutely. of Geffen Records? Boycotting Geffen Records and all their products um, and put a stop to this nonsense uh, of um, making money off of um, other people's tragedy. Mm -hmm. uh, Manson would be a nobody had he not done what he did to my sister and her friends and the La Biancas the next day. No one probably would ever have heard of Charles Manson. Joseph, how much of this promotion of violent people and violence itself do you think has impacted on your life, on the death of your son, who was caught in the crossfire of a gang-related shooting? How much of this promotion do you think has got to do with the real violence on the streets? I think it's unfortunate that uh, we as a society have somewhat allowed the fabric of our, the moral fabric of uh, our well-being. The sense is playing a great part in the kids' behavior these days, mm -hmm. and regardless of what uh, anybody's saying, whether well, it's... Well, go back to, to, to your son and, and tell us what happened that day. How, how exactly did he end up in, in that situation? Well, before I get into this, I think it would be interesting or important for us to know who we're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, just imagine uh, a child who, up to 15 years, uh, had always tried to avoid getting involved in anything, though we've tried. Uh, get him into karate classes, for example. That never, that wouldn't last for more than two weeks. Uh, get him interested in basketball. He's not interested. And football, nothing interests him but to stay home and spend his weekends reading. And reading what? Encyclopedia books. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the kid we're talking about. We're talking about a kid who, uh, the only problem after 15 years that my wife and I can think of that we've ever had with him is to get him to clean his room. <laughs> Who, at 15 years old, actually cleaned their room. Mm. And to do the dishes, and actually he was doing that. Uh, and a so, straight-A student. A I straight mean, student. Well, I remember doing some of the research, and you were saying that this is the, this is the kind of kid that everybody would like to have. I mean, just, just so disciplined and so good. It's unfortunate I could mock at him. But I think every parent would have wanted to have one in the house. This is the kid we're talking about. And so what happened? How did this... How did he get caught in the crossfire of a gang shooting? Lewis had just recently got involved in, uh, with a group called the Teens Against Gang Violence. Mm. Let it be noted that this was the very first thing that he had ever, ever gotten involved in. And we did not force him. We did not even suggest that to him. He found out on his own, and he decided that it was important for him to join. Mm -hmm. So n needless to say that I was shocked that he agreed to go to a meeting and even more shocked that he agreed to, to join the, the group. And that day, uh, it was just about a month after he had joined the group, he was heading to a Christmas party that the group was having, and he was carrying his Christmas party. What is it that you want 
people to know about your son, to know about this incident? Lewis should be an example for everyone that this can happen anywhere to anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife and I have vowed to continue the work that he had started. If this was important enough for him, if this was important for him to lose his life for it, then it is, it is important enough for us to continue. Mm -hmm. The question that we're raising today is why is there so much crime, so much violence? Is the music your children listen to, is it partially to blame for all of it? When we come back, we're going to talk to KRS-One, one of rap's biggest stars, about all of this in just a moment. <laughs> among 14 to 17 year olds has more than doubled since 1986. Teen violence is epidemic. And the question today is, is the world of rap and rock music, and with all of its violent images, and all of its tough heroes partially to blame? You're watching the video of KRS-One, the rap artist many credit for starting gangster rap. Please welcome him to our studio now. Gangsta Rap? Uh, well, first of all, the title Gangsta Rap was given to rap music by the media. Gangsta Rap doesn't exist. It's rap. Uh, gangsters don't rap. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if, you know, if we're discussing what Gangsta Rap is, uh, what I would say is that it's the expression of inner city youth that have no expression of themselves in anything that they're looking at. So we create our own expression. And because it's on the outside of mainstream America, we're the outcasts. We call it gangster rap. Because, mm -hmm. see, there's some people who say, well, it's promoting gangster activities, gangster mm -hmm. shooting, gangster violence. How do you answer that? Because a lot of the, the I mean, that, that I got to admit, that video is, is a bit powerful. It, it's frightening when, you, when you, you cover so many stories about right. the children caught in the crossfire like Lewis. Right. And you see that video and you say, my God, this is coming right into the living rooms. I mean, mm -hmm. how do you answer to parents and, and people like me who are very concerned about that? And a lot of teenagers, too. Well, uh, I mean, the answer is kind of broad. I'll hit a few points and try to answer everyone's consciousness at one time. Okay. Uh, point number one, when you discuss actions, you have to discuss thinking. If you don't discuss the thinking process, then discussing the actions, really, we're not going to get anywhere. Okay, so what were you thinking when you took the action of creating a video with all those guns? Terminator 2 was out at the same time. Godfather 1, 2, and 3 are in blockbuster video. All horror flicks can be rented at any given time. There's more money made on sex and violence as opposed to intelligence. That's what I was thinking. Oh. So what else goes into the... I mean, do you ever fear that when you're making a video and a song and... and, and letting people label you gangster rap that that do you ever stop and say my my goodness i mean to whom much is given much is required and my responsibility i might been might be leading people the wrong way i mean do you ever consider that do you ever think it's it's according to the people i'm leading uh the people who are calling us gangster rap we're not leading them uh people like christopher columbus lead them uh we don't we're not involved in that uh we the people i lead they understand the code we're speaking in code when we say uh uh the b word or the n word or this that or, or the other we're speaking in code mm -hmm. hold on hello um i like to make this statement to the father mm -hmm. i feel bad what happened to your son but um I have to say, rap music has nothing to do with what happened to your son. It could happen to anybody. It could happen to Karis one It could happen to me. It could happen to Rolanda. So I'm, what I'm trying to say is you can't really blame music on what happened to your son, and I hope you're not. And Joseph, what do you say? Do you believe what he said? Uh, partly. I'm not blaming rap music as the only reason this happened. 
But I think that everything in our society has a part of that blame to sustain, and rap music also. And when I say rap music, I'm only talking about those that are preaching violence, because uh, there is no one that can actually deny the importance and the effect of uh, music, the importance of, uh, uh, of uh, written words, books, and the importance of movies. Because it is known through history that some of the greatest things that happen in life, in, in human history, were first uh, uh, lived through the writings of uh, great writers. For example, the French Revolution. It didn't happen before it was uh, fought uh, in books. It was fought in books before it was fought beh behind the barricades. That's true, because some people will say, Joseph, say that, listen, the rap music didn't come up and create all the violence, that, that rap music is written because of the violence that the kids see. I'm not saying that it created the violence. I'm only mm -hmm. saying that the violent part of the rap music is, 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 is has to take some responsibility for what's going on also, mm -hmm. because okay. it is promoting it. All right. This is basically a statement, something where everyone's touching about books and literature. Right now, our reading and writing scores and national average are lower than they've ever been since 1768. That means kids aren't reading. They're not learning to read. They're watching things. They're listening to things to read. And so your point is what? That when they see these type of violent videos or Axl Rose promoting Charles Manson, what does that do to you? What do you worry about? Or do you worry at all? I'm not worried. I'm worried for people and ourselves. It's like everyone's worried about music pointing fingers at gangster raps, gangster rap, gangster. Like he's like Harris once says, you look in the movie screens, that's all they're depicting is rap violence, mm -hmm. strictly violence. No one's showing about love, no one's showing about peace and harmony. There are other rappers, there are other artists who are promoting that. Mm -hmm. Harris one's album, Return of the Boom Bat, mm -hmm. um, what you read uh, to a, a high level, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's not being played on the radio. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. Uh, I'd just like to briefly say, rap is nothing more than a mirror. It's giving us a reflection of what's in our society. And we all forget that America has a very violent history. I mean, from what was done to the Native American Indian, what was done to the African when he was brought here, and what is presently done to oppressive people who are part of this country. So you can't uh, expect all of that to be swept beneath a rug and not have a reflection of it. And when there is a reflection, we have to speak to it. Mm -hmm. Patty, what are you thinking when you hear this? Well, I think, first of all, society, you know, we have become numb, absolutely numb to violence. And um, we have to turn this around. And, and music is a mood setter. When you're in love, it's nice to listen to a love song. When you're blue, it's nice to listen to the blues. So, and music's always been that way. We need to become more socially aware and sensitize ourselves again because we bec become numb. We become numb to the pain that goes on. I mean, we've all lost someone um, through, uh, most of us, a lot of us through violence, and we have become numb. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything to us anymore when we see someone's head get blown off. Mm -hmm. So we have to start somewhere, and, and part of that is by us individually, all of us as citizens, becoming more responsible in what we do and what our children are doing. And this is a start. Um, not pointing fingers at any, any one particular thing, but we have to start. Okay. We're going to continue this conversation. We're basically talking about when violence becomes entertainment. Should we do something about it? Well, we're going to talk to two music industry insiders who have two very different points of view as soon as we come back. <laughs> is does violent music promote violent actions? Has the rock and rap world gone just too far? Our next guests are decision makers at two very popular urban radio stations. Oedipus is the program director at Boston's rock station WBCN. And Quincy McCoy is the program director at New York's WBLS, which just last month announced that it would no longer play violent music. <laughs> That's a major step. I mean, WBLS is one of the top radio stations here in New York, and, and, you, and you just made a statement. How did that come about? What was the thing that made you turn? Well, actually, it was an informal selection process that we've always had at BLS, and we decided to make a formal announcement about it. Uh, it kind of happened through research. The audience told us. Our listeners started telling us. 
We started noticing the uh, a lack in sales in some uh, some rap records, and I noticed that they could only reach a certain level. Uh, there was always letters and cards and stuff coming in about certain songs and certain words and certain lyrics and so forth and so on. But uh, we started getting uh, a small backlash about it. Uh, people were saying things like what? Uh, other radio station people, I would get on the phone and talk to other program directors and ask them questions about what are your people saying on the phone? Uh, what kind of letters are you getting about this song? What's happening with this? And what, were, uh, what was the public saying, particularly about violence? The public was saying that they had had enough of uh, the language. So uh, in music discussions with our, our usual music selecting committee, it came up. It was just a conversation. And Has it hurt business when you make a decision? I mean, because that's a that, could, that could be. Some people say that could be business suicide. Well, some you people. You got kids who listen to the radio station. You stop playing their music. Well, at the press conference when we made the announcement, uh, predictions were made by the media people that were there that you may lose some audience, you may lose some money. Did you? Uh, in actuality, in the last rating book that just came out, in the 18 to 24 demographic where we were supposed to lose audience, we gained a lot of audience. We went from a five share to a nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hi, uh, WBLS, I'm Kid Flash. Uh, I was one of the guys that call and complain about all the negative rappers because y'all wasn't giving us positive rappers enough airplay. And back to Chris, for us, Chris, what you're doing and stuff is not really considered gangster, considering the West Coast rappers. This is what I try to bring out. We need more positive rappers on stage, like on your show, that can show the people that we have a good side of rappers. We have positive rappers as well as negative rappers. It's more positive rappers than negative rappers. Mm. We got to get that straight. Okay. Oedipus, what, what, uh, what thought processes do you have to go through when you're selecting music for your programs? I mean, do you really take a conscious effort as well to, to cut out violent music, or do you say, hey, look, this is what they listen to? I program what the audience would, would like to hear, wants to hear, and what I think they'd like to hear. Does that include so-called Axl Rose's Charlie Manson song? Well, Axl Rose's Charlie Manson song is really, it's sort of like a love song. It's sort of, it's rather, the song itself is rather inno inno innocuous. I don't think you've ever heard the song. I don't think Patty would call that a love song. You know, Charles Manson isn't innocuous. But after seeing the beginning of your show here, uh, I'm not uh, convinced that Axl hasn't done a public service by wearing these T-shirts. The fact that these two people did not know who Charles Manson is indicates that if we forget the past, we are doomed to repeat it. Okay, they included this song on the record, and by the way, for the, uh, for the record, it was written by a Beach Boy. Mm -hmm. but the copyright is owned by Charles Manson. He did record the song. Mm -hmm. They never mentioned Charles Manson on the record. It comes at the very end after this long gap, and this song comes up. And now, when I first heard it, I said, what is this song? So I went out and looked it up. And the fact that Charles Manson could sing a song like this shows how devious, insidious, and awful this human being is, and is even more reason to keep this guy in prison for the rest of his life. But do you keep him on your radio? I don't play Charles Manson on my radio station, and I would not play Charles Manson on my radio station. What about the, the so-called... I do play Guns N' Roses. Guns are okay. What about the so-called um, the so-called gangster rap, that type of stuff? Do you include that? Do you... Well, we're a rock station, so we don't play much rap music. Mm -hmm. But as far as I'm concerned, rap music, uh, especially gangster rap music, it's it's... They're action movies for the ear. Mm -hmm. And art reflects life. Rarely does life reflect art. Mm -hmm. They are rapping about what they're witnessing, what they're seeing, and what they're experiencing. Okay. Question. Yes. Patty mentioned about Charles Manson and people still working for him. I wanted her to explain a little more what she was referring to. Oh, okay. Well, there's um, still a part of the um, old family, the people that they consider family that, are st that are, aren't in prison, that are still out there ready to do his dirty deed if he just said the word to them. Mm. You know, he, it, it was a whole cult thing that went on back in 1969 and earlier. He had people that followed him. And th this is what worries me, you know, that, that a lot of the young kids don't know what Charles Manson was about. And what he was about was a uh, type of, for, lack of a better word, a guru to these young people. 
Um, they looked up to him, and obviously they would go to any extent for him, and that's exactly what they did. They, and, they killed for him because he told them to do so. And part of what you're saying is it is important to keep Charlie Manson in our heads so that this type of thing doesn't repeat itself. Exactly, and his, uh, his original followers, you know, a lot of them never went to jail, and they are still out there, and a lot of them have the same okay. mentality. Question. Um, I have a question for Oedipus. Um, Guns N' Roses made a statement at one of their um, concerts saying that they should string up all the, and, and lynch all the goonies, and what they were talking about were people of all ethnic colors. And yet you turn around and you make a statement that, you know, even though um, your audience likes Guns N' Roses, you won't play Charles Manson's records. And yet you're, you're um, playing records by a group that, that's prejudiced, and that talks about violence, talks about taking people of ethnic color and lynching them. you answer to that Oedipus right after this. in just a moment, but first I want you to take a look at this. This is Axl Rose, the lead singer for Guns N' Roses. He's seen here wearing the Charles Manson t-shirt. He is the man who's credited for making these shirts quite a popular item these days. Joining us now by telephone is Richard Lemons of Zooport Riot Gear. He's the man who markets the Charles Manson clothing line. Uh, Richard, uh, please welcome Richard here today. Uh, Mr. Lemons, are you with us? Yes. I, I guess the main question is, why in the world would you promote Charles Manson on T-shirts? It's the American way. What is the American way? The American way is to be an entrepreneur, and we've scraped and groveled out here in Southern California. My brother and I, we used to live on the street, just like Charlie, and just like Axel Rose did before he got famous. And Patty, what do you think of that? I think that this is sickening, and I hope that everybody, everybody, if you see someone out on the street with a shirt on or any piece of clothing, give them a piece of your mind, please. And Let's not give this gentleman a way to make money off of our pain. Off the this death of your sister. You know what? Can I it, respond to that? Yeah, I'm sorry. It didn't affect your life, so it doesn't mean anything to you, but it affects your mind. sick way to make money off of someone else's pain. I mean, this is a no good man. Charlie Manson is a no good man. That's a lie. Relax. That's a lie? Relax. Oh my gosh. Mr. Lemons, Charles Manson is one of the uh, one of the biggest mass murders. Okay, you just told a lie. Are you a Christian? That's none of your business, sir. That's not what we're talking about. <laughs> we're talking about you promoting You told Charlie Manson a mass murder. He did not kill those people. Charlie Manson has... Did you know that? Did you know that Charlie didn't kill those people? No, no. Down. Okay, wait a minute. Let me give you the facts. Charles Manson has two counts of murder, on, and the rest of his counts are for conspiracy. That's right. He did not That's kill right. your sister or the LaBiancas. Oh, but wait a minute. I mean, let, let's, let's back up here. He went into the LaBianca house, and he tied them up, and then he had his followers go in and do the dirty deed and told them how to do it. Now, does that not, is that not murder? No, nope, he didn't kill him. And there's Listen, no physical evidence. Well, Mr. Lemon, Richard, was, Richard, come on now. He was in the house. Richard, hey, look, Richard, let's not we're get... We're not putting a picture of Tex Watson on our T-shirts. We're putting a picture of Charlie Manson because he represents rebellion and, and being antisocial. And in today's society, our society is so screwed up, we should be antisocial. And you're adding to it. No, we're not. Yes, you are. No, we're from not. From the audience, from the audience, please. It takes a whole village to raise a child. And I think the fact that uh, what you're really interested in is the almighty dollar. You're not interested in the quality of our life. <laughs> You probably believe in abortion. You, you probably believe it's a woman's right to choose. We're not we're, talking about those issues today, Richard. We're here talking about your Charles Manson T-shirt. That's right, but it, I mean, it goes hand in hand. But pardon me, sir, no. about this question. Charles Manson was a killer. You know, no, he, he wasn't. He, he, he stands for the he, Nazis. You see the sign yeah. that was on his head. That doesn't make him a killer. And you're making money off of somebody who doesn't stand for the American way. Standing for the American way is spending, like, working real hard every day, making a life out of something. 
Now, I'm trying hard to get into the rap business myself. And to see people like that make money, that's horrible. Because okay. I stand for the American way. Well, I am a Christian. Take the swastika off of his forehead. And I don't have it. Can I make one statement? Can I make a statement? I'm an educator in the New York City school system. And though censorship has always been an evil word, uh, in today's econo economic society, we have children spending more and more time alone while their parents are working. And I do agree with this gentleman that it is our job to educate. But the children are spending more and more time alone. And I think it is time that we took responsibility for the time that children are up and around so that they are not exposed to some of the violence. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with we, that. We'll continue this conversation. We've got to take a break right after this. Um, and Patty says and thank you. And I hope that everyone does just the same. And you know, there's a point I'd like to make. I mean, and I know everyone understands this, but the, I don't know what this man was talking about. And you're because, talking about Richard Lemons, who is on the phone with us. He's right. still with us. Okay. Uh, Richard Lemons is Charles one of the ones Manson. marketing the Charles Manson t-shirt line. Patty. Let, let Patty Manson answer the question, is please, Richard. A murderer. He has two counts of murder, and the rest of the counts are conspiracy. Now, if you go up and you tape someone's hands, and then someone else goes and murders them, are you not just as willing of a partner in that murder as if you stuck the knife in their body? Absolutely. Oh. There's no physical evidence, there's no fingerprints that Charlie Manson was in that house. Oh, no. See, question from the audience, please. None. This question is for Richard. I wanted to ask, how would you feel if it was one of your family members that was murdered? I'd go kill him myself, but yeah. Charlie didn't kill him. You just Tex want the money. Those other girls killed. <laughs> you know. And you know, we should point out that Sharon, Sharon Tate was pregnant at the time of her My murder. My sister had. Yeah, and that's, that's another lot of things. Joseph. This gentleman is trying to hide behind the American way. Uh, and every time the issue comes up about the uh, content, the violent content of movies, sitcoms, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, songs, uh, the industry try to hide behind this. We can't have censorship. This is not about censorship. This is about a call to the artist first, so that the artist remembers that every talent is a gift from God, and that no gift from God is intended to be used as a weapon to destroy society That's or right. humanity. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. The second, the second part of the call, the second part of the call is also to remind the artist that there is, there is a form of censorship that is accepted. It is the form of censorship that is dictated by the artist's own sense of morality, integrity, and decency. There you go. In, in uh, listening to Richard Lemons, uh, it clearly came to my mind that Adolf Hitler never killed anybody. There's no comparison. No, but you I, know what? Um, Adolf no Hitler. Richard, you know something? You sound like a Manson follower. Do you? I mean, what? You love this guy, don't you? No, I don't. No, I don't. I think he got a raw deal because he didn't kill anybody. Uh, but the, know, let me tell you something. But let me let me get this but straight. Wait, but Richard, 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 Richard. This is my talk show. I can't make one point. Richard, let me ask you this. Okay. The concern here is not the technicality of well, where yes, Charles Manson was when people died. The, the issue here is there's no question about what Charles Manson represents. And it bothers people to see little kids who don't even know who this man is, who don't know what, what, what havoc he wreaked, to be wearing clothes that promote his image. That is upsetting to people in America. Okay. And, I don't, and what we are trying to find out from you is not whether you think Manson's a murderer or not, but why are you selling Manson's okay. shirts? Can I tell you? Yes, please. Okay. We did the T-shirt as just a cool surfing T-shirt around three years ago because Charlie's face was compelling, rebellious image. And the term on the back, Charlie don't surf, that came from Apocalypse Now. That meant the Viet Cong don't surf, and it's okay to go out and surf. Okay, now That's where it came from. Answer this for me, Richard. Why is it important that we choose Manson as a figure to represent rebellion. Because the media has made him for the past almost 25 years to be this monster. But you have made him a hero. No, we haven't. What does the back of the shirt say? We'll Very talk about that right after this. <laughs> violence 
images of violence, violent music, and is the message, go out in the streets and be violent too. Um, the gentleman on the phone, Richard Lemons, is representing or marketing a, a line of clothes with Charles Manson, from hats to dresses to t-shirts. And Richard, you wanted to make a point before we left, and what was that? Yeah, I just wanted to say, if um, Charlie Manson is doing life, I'm um, almost without parole, uh, for influencing and um, telling those people to go kill those other people, what's the difference between that and Tupac Shakur writing a song called Cop Killer and that black kid in Texas was listening to that song while he killed the Texas Ranger. Now, why shouldn't Tupac and the record company go to jail forever just like Charlie? You tell me what the difference is. KRS-One, you're one of the biggest rappers out now. Why don't you answer that question, or why don't you... Well, n n number one, Tupac didn't write Cop Killer. That's yeah, number one. Yeah, he did. One. The original Cop Killer, he sure did. Richard, no, do you want to keep no, talking or listen? No, I, actually, come to think of it, let me also say that Cop Killer is not a rap song, it's a rock song. Let me also point out that Charles Manson, there's no possible way you can equate Charles Manson to any rap artist. First of all, <laughs> Charles Manson is white. Hey, he has nothing to do with First of all. He has nothing to do with color. Can we hang up on this fool? <laughs> Question. I have a comment, um, Richard. The only thing to say about you is that you're ignorant and to Oedipus, I want to tell you something. Did you actually listen to what this girl said? You said that you play Guns N' Roses, and you also said that you're not familiar with their lyrics. I think you I ought to say play. That. I yes, you say did. It. No, no. yes, you did. I, that was yes, a statement you did. she said yes, you did. he made on Can stage. Can I please finish? No, he made Either... a statement on stage. I'm not an apologist for Guns N' Roses, okay? I support rock and roll music, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying this guy... This guy's T-shirts are desirable, okay? I'm simply here to support the artists. And let's stop blaming the record labels. Let's stop blaming the rap artists. Let's even stop blaming the T-shirt vendors. The problem is 12 years of failed educational policies, 12 years of failed economic policies, 12 years of failed uh, social injustice in, um, in the urban areas. Question. Uh, this is a statement. Uh, we may not like Mr. Lemons, but his opening statement was an accurate one. This is the American way. Before the product was cotton, it's uh, alcohol, it's tobacco. America has always made money off the exploitation of its own people, unfortunately. So we all have to come together and change that. And we'll be right back. <laughs>